Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this day and for this time, for this offering that has been given for the upbuilding of your kingdom. We pray that you will bless it. In the name of your son, Jesus of Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, if you desire prayer at the altar, we invite you to come where able. You may also stand where you are and pray there. One thing for sure, God does indeed hear and answer prayer. Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise. For it was grace that bought my liberty. I just can't tell you why he has come to love me so. But I know this one thing. He has looked beyond my faults. Hallelujah. And he has seen my need. Our oh, Father God, you are a mighty and awesome God. The one and only true and living God, our maker, our creator, our provider, our giver of gifts, we thank you, we praise you, and we lift you up. You alone, O oh God, are worthy of all praise, and we stand before you to give you praise, Father God. We come filled with thanksgiving, Father God. Don't know where we'd be without you, Father watching over us while we slumbered and slept, bringing us out, Father God, blessing us with your traveling grace and mercy, allowing us to be in your worship one more time. Can't thank you enough, Father. Can't thank you enough for your goodness and your mercy, Father God, that just follows, follows, follows us every day and every hour. Sure do thank you, Father. Father God, we do stand now to ask you for forgiveness. Father, we know we're not perfect. We know that we have sinned. We know, Father God, that we have done what you told us not to do. And we know also, Father, that we just haven't done what you have commanded us to do. And so we need your forgiveness, Father. We need your forgiveness, and we thank you for your forgiveness, Father God. Don't know where we'd be if we didn't have you, Lord. Father God, we stand now for our sick and shut-in, Father, those who are at home resting and recuperating and healing, those who are in hospitals and nursing homes, Father God. We just pray your continued blessing over them, Father God. We pray that you would just heal their bodies as only you can, Father God. And Father God, we thank you for our health. For we know, Father God, that if it wasn't for you, there go each one of us. So we thank you that we got the free movement of our limbs, can stand and speak and think, Father God. We thank yes. you. We thank you, Lord God. And Father God, we just pray now that you will bless this time of worship, Father God. Yes. We pray that your word will go out, Father God, and land on hearts of those who have not accepted Jesus as their personal Savior, that they'll come in, Father God, yielding to the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, yes. Father God, that is our prayer. We pray you bless the pastor as he comes to bring your word today. And bless us, Father God, that we will receive it and live accordingly. It is in the name of your Son, your mighty, marvelous, magnificent Son, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I. Oh 
I've been here 55 years. They've always showed love to the community. And I thank you all for the love you showed to my family and me. I come to bring you a message. But that's the first message I want to let you know that I appreciate, I love every one of you. You don't have to love me, but I'm mandated to love you. I tell you why. 
because almost 70 years of my life has gone into this. I'm too close to heaven to turn around. I don't know where, I don't know when, but I know God is not ready for me because God is not through with me yet. But when he get through with me, I shall come forth as pure gold. Not now, not now, not perfect. I'm still trying to grow in grace. So I bring you the message this morning that the Lord has given me. If you notice Galatians, the verse 2, chapter 2, verse 20, from the King James Version, we're going to read that verse together. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself from suffering. I'm crucified with Christ. Please be seated. I'm crucified. Sound kind of awkward. When the Lord woke me up and the Holy Spirit told me to read that, I am crucified. Now, Paul said that to Galatians. He had led the church of Galilee to Christ. Let me give you an introduction. They had made a great start in the Christian life. It bad to start out and turn around. I said bad. There's a whole lot of folk I used to I know that used to be tight, but said the church wasn't right and they left. No, you weren't right. The church has always been. The church is the body of Christ. You don't ever say it's not right. If anything wrong, I'm wrong, not God's church. So they made a good start in the Christian life. And were doing well spiritually. Later, some Jewish teachers called Judasarin called the Galatian that told them that, that to be saved you must only believe in not only in Christ but you must also obey the Moistic law. The sign of which is circumcision. In preaching this hearsay and they preached it everywhere. He'll say, you hear he'll say it everywhere. But it's not exactly the word of God. They also attached Paul's apostleship and the gospel. They attacked to them. Their false gospel had a determinate effort on the Galatians. It was beginning to hinder their obedience to God. They were starting to observe some part of the law and regulation of the Moritic law, which will lead them into legalism and nowhere fair. So, as we look at this today, we're talking about the rhythm not come not with anything new. But I come to tell you what the Holy Ghost said we need to know. 
what does it mean? What does the resurrection mean? Well, some take it one way and some take another, but it means Christ was once dead. But he rose the third day. And because he lived, those who trust in him can live also. Paul said, I've been crucified. I died with him on Calvary. Nevertheless, who? I live, you live in the flesh, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. I live in the flesh, but there's something else in me. Christ lives in me. If Christ lives in you, you're in good shape this morning. the text, Father, the apostle is, apostle is showing how he died to the law because they were released from legal bondage. It was through his becoming a partaker of the death of Christ. Help me, Holy Ghost. Fellowship in number one, fellowship with Christ. The first thing was well, in death. We are fellowshipping with Christ in death. Catch me now. Paul. He said, I was under the law in the suffering of death. Under the law, I carry you to death only. And that when he died, I died. But I, when he died, I died with him. Paul could not say this until he met Jesus on the Damascus road. That means he was converted. You can't say you died with Christ if you haven't been born again. <laughs> or not with him? Right. Well, Paul was not with him on Cap. Uh, physical on Calvary, but he was there. And you know what? My mind goes back there all the time. Let me stop you and take something. Look like I was there. Do you know that suffering on Calvary was for everybody? That's been in the Sunday school lesson. I told you, you don't have no right to look over nobody. The church is the body of Christ. Let me say what I said in Sunday school. You don't have no business shutting nobody out of God's church. Because Paul said, in this, Paul wrote this, judge you not. Well, he ain't right. They ain't right. Who, 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 who told you to judge God's people? You gonna help me preach? I got to preach anyway. Who told you to judge God's people? I'm not gonna. Jesus said, judge you not. That you be judged. That right, get quiet, but you need to hear this. For the same judgment you judge on others shall be judged on you. All stones are going to hell. I don't know how you know. They ain't right in the how you know. Your mouth is just the wrong as some of them folk you say. Come on, y'all. Your ugly mouth. Telephone call. Your ugly mouth is worse than some of those folk you talk. I tell you what, the church is the drought people. 
This ain't no social, the church is not a social club, but we, that means anybody, I don't care how they dress, who they are, may be, God, Christ, died for everybody. You can say nothing if you want to, cause some folk big shot enough to think Christ didn't die for certain folk. But the Holy Ghost told me to emphasize this. I was there. I died in him. You ought to be so close to Christ if you know him now. You ought to die in him. He suffered. I want to keep that before you. And he didn't do anybody any wrong. Keep that in your mind. You know, that's been said a whole lot. But 98% of the folk in church don't believe it. Don't, don't, you know, could have, I could care less attitude. But that's something big that Christ, who know, no, knew no sin, took upon the world of all of our, not yo, all of our sin. That means all the sin Raymond have committed, all the sin Raymond go commit, he died for every one of them. Satisfying <laughs> divine justice. He satisfied divine justice for me. Thus, baptism for me signifies baptism, baptism into death. Catch it now. I don't, I'm, I was putting it together, I got happy when I got Holy Ghost was giving it to me. I'm, I'm full. Romans 6 and 4. Listen at this. We are, we are baptized with him in buried in baptism in him unto death. That's what baptism means. As crucified with him, I become dead to the law so that the law shall no more become occasion of sin. Romans 7, 5, and 6. It's a lot of biblical stuff. So if you don't like the Bible, you're going to say he didn't preach. That's up to you. You can't, I can't out preach the Bible. Romans 7, 5, and 6. I have come dead to sin, and there are no more the servant of sin. I serve and trust God. Romans 6, 6, 16, I become dead to the word, hear me now. And the word to me, 1 Corinthians 1, 6 and 14, and God had both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us by his own power. That's what the resurrection, that's what the death is. God will raise, we will raise, be raised one day if you believe in it. I think I better throw this in since I see some of y'all don't quite like this. I'm glad you don't. Do you know what? This earth is not your home. I know you don't believe it. You can build nice houses and, and put all the money you want in the bank and, 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 and do everything the world has. But I've never seen a U-Haul, Frank, behind a hearse. That means you ain't care. You are not going to care anything out of this world. Naked came in this world. Naked you going out. You are not your home. You're not at home at the world. There's another place where there's the, the, 
the word no more. That there's always some more here in this world. I just got the heart filler, but I can't say there ain't no more sickness. You can't say there ain't no more trouble. You may not have no trouble yesterday, but you may have two tomorrow. <laughs> Nobody resisted in trouble. So, I, this is my mystery to the world. The apostle dead. The apostle Paul say he's dead and yet alive. Y'all get me? I'm alive. But something y'all to be dead from. Talking about I can't go. I, I can't stand nobody smoking. I smoke so long till I just can't stand. I be getting me a cigarette. Something wrong with that. I can't, I don't think you ought to go in the liquor store. I can't go, I can, I can go and sit in the whiskey store all day. Come on, y'all. If God pull you from cigarettes like he did, me, so I smoke cigarettes. Drunk some liquor too. I ain't drinking it now. You will come dead to something. No, some of you will stop drinking liquor and went on dope. <laughs> Shooting your mama, killing your grandmama. Come on, y'all. One sin will lead to you better not be dead. Look, you better hear. If you ever heard me preach, I'm not preaching at you. I'm preaching to you. But come dead to that stuff. Tell nobody, hey, if I were you, I wouldn't use profanity. If I were you, I wouldn't. Because you know what? When a person uses profanity, that means he does not have enough words in his vocabulary to make a decent sinner. Come on, y'all. You have to use, come on, clap your hands. That person is so ignorant, he can't make a decent sinner without, I don't care. And you know what? Some trained folk can't tell a word to you without using a profane word. It don't hurt me because I've been around. I guarantee you, I know more cussing than if you want to call. And you, boy, let me tell you, I've been around. My mama used to cuss. <laughs> I know how to cuss. But it don't worry me. I don't use profanity no more. Because the Bible said, y'all hear me? Said, let your common sense be yay, yay, and nay, nay. You don't even have to say, hell no. Just say, no. <laughs> preach, Raymond Carr. I I, God let me come back to preach. This is not this is not mystery to the world. Folks don't understand me. When I was going to school, I was a tough little customer. Tough little customer. Miss Saint, you couldn't have stood me in school. <laughs> well, I'm teacher. Boy, I was a tough little customer. But I've been changed. The apostle is dead and he's yet alive. Our death with Christ involved our life. Your death in Christ involved your life with him. If we die with Christ, we believe we can shall also live with him. Romans 6 and 8. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. If it is thus we Realize the power of the resurrection. Philippians 3 and 10. Listen, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made confident unto his 
this. One thing you ought to know that you ought to know Jesus. And you ought to study your Bible. And you ought to know what if that you can learn to have a living, you can live better if you stop reading the Bible and go to studying it. You see, it's a different thing from reading some and studying it. That means you ought to get down. If you ever been a time, you need to study your Bible. I know it's on your cell phone. It's on mine. <laughs> But you don't get me pulling my cell phone. Boy, the, 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 you study, you, I don't care how many inventions they bring, you study your Bible. If you want to live a better life, because that's God's work. Come on, y'all. I'm getting mad. Yeah, y'all, so we, amen. Study to show yourself. Approval from the workmen of God. Rightly divide the word of two preacher. You have a message if you study God's word. Everything you hear in the pulpit is not a message. It's just it may be a testimony, but not a message. What you got now? A message from God. We shall, live. we shall live with him by the power of God. We're with him with the Holy Spirit. I want to take my time, but I want to live. I want, do you want to see Jesus? Okay, okay, okay. You, you, can't, you can't live with the word now and see Jesus. If you haven't been born again, I don't care if you've been in church 40 years. If you're not saved, you better check yourself. And that's not mine to do. I'm checking Raymond every day. I know I've been born again. Oh, we all so weak in him, but we, but we are, shall live with him by the power of to what we'll live with them. Let me, me hold on and get through. I don't want to keep you too long. It is not a life which has it root in the apostle himself. <laughs> That's what I got. Paul didn't want you to think of him. Now, Paul wanted to brag. He had all the kind of education that they had in that day. But you know what Paul said? I count that as done for the glory of God. Show, sure, learn all you can and can all you learn and sit on it because you're going to need it. But don't let the education turn you a fool. But I want to turn my, I, I thought about this boy, but look, look, boy went to school a day or two and couldn't, couldn't understand nothing he was saying. A person got a real education and come back here and do just like Machiavelli. He never changed his way. Uh, excuse me, Brother Bellman. I like, I, I, I have to, I like the way, look, anytime anything changed, you, you ain't what you thought you was. Education don't change you how to say good morning. Good morning. Uh -uh. <laughs> well, boy, I'm my tongue poke get off with me. Can't hardly understand nothing he's saying. And got your head all stuck in the air like a spread. <laughs> Let your head out there. Uh, look, your, your, your education is to come down and help somebody. Put your head out the air. Help somebody. Look at Martin Luther King. A PhD. But he had this in mind. If I can help somebody. As I pass along. If I can cheer somebody. With the word of song. 
if I can uh, teach somebody when they're traveling wrong, then my living will not be in vain. That's what that you, if you're saved, you're saved to save somebody. <laughs> Am I right? Now, boy, if, and you had this quicken who was dead and trespassed. I got to get through it then. For by grace, no, by grace are you saved through faith. Let me tell you what grace is. Getting something you don't deserve. Anybody here ever got something you didn't deserve? <laughs> Walk me up this morning. My hand up, my hand. Anybody got something you didn't deserve? Look at them folk. I told you you thought you were better than anybody else. You didn't deserve to get up this morning. Raise your hand. If, if you got anything in your life that you don't deserve, raise your hand. Come on now, let's come to it. I got a whole lot of stuff that I didn't deserve. Woo, let your mind, I, I'm, let me stop there a minute. I've got so many things I didn't deserve. Grave. More than woke me up this morning. Only time, I, I've never in jail. Oh, Raymond Bragg, no, it ain't either. I just was never caught. Come on, y'all. Grace kept me out of jail. Been a pastor for almost 70 years uninterrupted. Raymond, you a good pastor. No, I'm not. It had not been for the grace of God, Frank, I wouldn't have made it. I'm talking about Raymond now. I'm talking about Raymond. I'm talking about Raymond. Raymond ain't good. No, no, no. No, no, no. I can just go back from all the way back up the road. I tell you what, while I'm talking, you look back down the line. You ain't been so good yourself, is you? Huh? How you think? You, I tell you what you do. David uh, I tell you what, I was just smart. No, you wouldn't. Ma, boy, God, that had, look, sometime when Raymond wasn't praying, Lucy and John were praying, that my mom and dad, they were praying for me. Come on, y'all. Don't you know my mind running back? I got, I got good with me on my mind run back. My soul look back and wonder how you made it over. You sitting in here now, but how about look? Ooh, how about the the devil that you've done? Oh Lord, Lord, for the, the, every time y'all say, oh, Lord, Lord, forgive me. I just was crazy. Yeah, you were crazy, Raymond. They grace kept you. By grace you are saved. This is not of yourself. Through faith. You got to have faith in this. But it is the gift of God. I got I got a few more now of it. Yeah, I'm in good time. Don't let me preach too long, Lord. But the older I get, the more the worst thing a, put, a preacher can do is to quit when God having their tired. I'm just getting old enough to preach here. Yeah. Number three, the life I now live by faith of the Son of God who gave himself me my last point. We died that we died that we might live. I thought I was having a good time. When I was running up and down the road, those dirt roads in the county, driving fast and 
and, and cutting up and playing loud music. It's a wonder. But they had old Maypop tires on it, y'all. You know, tires used to have tubes, you know. <laughs> Going 60 and 70 miles an hour on all those roads up there on the car. And God wouldn't let not a one blow up them tires could have rolled out and peeled them. But great night of yourself. I didn't have sense enough to know I was at the point of death and didn't know. And when I could have been dead, y'all need to help me close this. Sleeping in my grave, he snatched to the death of the angel back and said, No! Gave him another chance. I'm too close now to turn around, y'all. Uh, well, well. The present time is stayed living with him. Now, how to live with him in eternity. That's why I'm living. Now I want to live with him in eternity. I'm closing now. It is relying through faith the power of Christ to destroy the old life and live himself with the pen on. Look, what I'm saying that my closing. I had fellowship with him in death, fellowship with Christ in life. The life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who gave himself for me. That's the three outlines I tried to give you. Now, if you were not crucified with Christ, it's a good time now to think about what he had done for you. And you know, mother and dad taught us, always thank folk for what they have done for you. God has done more for you than anybody if could he sent his son down to 42 generations. <laughs> he got off in a place called Bethlehem. He was born just like you and I. But the only thing about his birth, I have uh, my uh, 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 earthly father, but he didn't have an earthly father. Is that right? Uh, the Holy Ghost told me to go in like this, y'all. But he didn't have the Holy Ghost overshadowed Mary. And she became, which I, that's the truth, y'all. That's the virgin birth. He was born. He walked planet earth. He went about doing good. I'm talking about Jesus. He healed the sick. And he raised the dead. Gave sight to the blind. I want you to know him today. I, I'm trying to recognize them. I'm trying to let you know uh, as much as I know about him. But he did well. He never hurt nobody. Else. But uh, they hated him. They ridiculed him. They talked about him. And I know I'm going to be talked about because I want to be like Jesus. That's all right. Did they leave him there? No! I got to tell you more. He made his uh, interest in Jerusalem the last time. Help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, he went there uh, to celebrate the Passover. But look at him. He caught him out. Uh, he in that Jerusalem. Uh, he, after he had the last supper, he, that same night, uh, he went out in the garden to pray. Uh, and the Ku Klux Klan uh, caught him out there. Uh, captured him uh, and carried him to Pilate's house. Uh, Pilate was the high priest. Uh, they tried him uh, all night long. Uh, against the, the Roman law, but early that morning, uh, they brought him to the temple, uh, let me see it, Holy Ghost, uh, 
bring me down early with the temple on Sunday morning. They took a midnight decision for the day now. They said, we going to take it. But I hear Pilate saying, I have no thought in him. But look at Jesus. He said, Pilate really wants to turn him loose. But look at here, Pilate, they said, if you turn him loose, we're going to tell Caesar, and you're going to lose your head. That's what they were saying. So Pilate said, i tell you what to do. Bring me some water. He washed his hand. I was at a praying church, yeah. But he couldn't wash his heart. Good God Almighty. He said, this man, I have no guilt. Carol, I, I pity you in the judgment. But they passed the crown of thorns on his head. And somebody said, Jesus was a, uh, uh, was a, uh, 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 both human and divine. It wasn't hurting him. Let me straighten that out. Gee, God uh, left Jesus. Uh, Jesus was left there to suffer by itself. Uh, let me prove it with the word. Uh, and I go on in and go. Then Jesus said, uh, 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 Father, Father, you, he left there now. While he was on the cross, uh, he said, uh, 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 Father, uh, why? Why did you leave? In other words, that's what he was saying. Uh, that let you know that God was nowhere around. A divinity was nowhere around. He suffered uh, just like you and I would suffer. Uh -huh. But that's what he did for all of us. Uh, they hung him up there from the sixth to the ninth hour. Father, forgive them, for they do not what they are done. They crucified him, one on one side, one on the other side, one rail on him. I says, if you be the son of God, I come down uh, and get, uh, uh, help us uh, but the other one uh, rail on him uh, say you be the son of god uh, come on help us down uh, you don't hear me uh, i'm going on in the house he died for you he died for me he died for everybody he died for your enemy he died for your friend uh, he died for the slave. He died for the white man. He died for the Mexican. He died for everybody. I want you to know uh, everybody who got life in them. He died. Uh, they said uh, three days. Uh, but early, early, on a Sunday morning, he got up. With all power, all power, not some power, but all power, is trusted in his hand. I tell you, the devil can't do me no harm, cause I got Jesus. I got, do you have it? I got Jesus. That's enough. Oh, power. All power is in his hand. And I got my hand in God's hand. Don't worry about me. I'm all right now. I'm all, I hope you're all right. I hope you're all right. I'm all right now. Don't worry. I'm all right now. I'm all right now. Ah, I'm all right now. I'm all right. I'm a soldier. I'm all right. I was crucified with him, crucified with the world. If I have it, thank you.
listen at this. Now I'm gone. If I don't have it, that's all right. Look, don't you let things worry you what you don't have. Do you miss that? You gonna kill yourself about something, wreck yourself that by what you don't have. Trust in God and thank God for what you do have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's me. That's me. If I have it, all right. If I don't have it, well, you have. Doc told me, "Real, you take care. I'm gonna do all I can. Don't you go to the I said, doctor. I told him, look at him. Tell me not to go to the pulpit." I said, Doctor, you don't know what God told me. I'm all right. You don't know. And you wasn't there. You know what God told me? God changed my life. Tell you about Paul. I want to keep introducing him to you. They put Paul. He was shipwrecked. He was bit by a, a, a one of those pythons. And laughing up when he got to Rome, I thought I need to tell you. Know what Paul got? Got his head cut off. But I believe when I get to him, I'm going to meet Paul. Paul gave himself. He was a persecutor, just like me. But he turned from a persecutor to a Christian. Now there may be somebody here that need to come to Christ. If you ever needed the Lord before you need him now. Need him now. If I wasn't sure. If I wasn't sure, if I died today, I know where I'm going. Now, if you're not sure with that, when we open the door of the church, I want you to come. Come, come, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Don't come to Raymond. Don't come to Raymond. Don't come to Raymond. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. And let's get straight now. The door of the church. Y'all saying, I start the saying I better not saying today. Come on to Jesus. The door of the church of God's church. This church, look at him. This church don't belong to me. I didn't die for the church. Jesus died for this church. And my responsibility is to let you know. If you're unsaved, you're not fixed. I'm all right. I want you to be all right too. I'm all right. I'm all right. Jesus. Come on. Come on. He will your life grant. Come on. Take good care. Ooh, just come. Do that one more time.
Say amen. 